Hey there, it's Coach Kyle here. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how to increase and speed up your metabolism so you can eat more while losing more weight in the long run. Speeding up your metabolism refers to increasing the rate at which your body converts food and drinks into energy. So putting it simply, when you have a faster metabolism, it's gonna help you burn more calories at rest or during activities, which is over time gonna help you with weight management, energy levels, and so much more. Now the most important thing to understand is your basal metabolic rate which is simply the number of calories that your body needs to be able to simply survive, breathe, and all that stuff. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that this number is gonna be so different based off of each person. There may be a construction worker, someone who just has a very fast metabolism who will need to eat 3,800 calories just to survive. There'll be someone who's maybe a desk worker, a little bit older, just whatever, the situation's different. She might need 1,300 calories to survive. Everybody's gonna be so different and a lot of people don't realize how much these numbers can actually vary from person to person for a number of different reasons. Now with that, the reason you're here is probably to wonder how to actually speed it up. And I'm actually going to start off with a bunch of common misconceptions and myths that are associated with metabolism because it seems like nowadays there's just a million things being thrown out there, YouTube video after YouTube video, article after article. And the first and most important misconception that I often hear is just eating more meals within the day. A lot of people think that that's what's gonna keep your metabolism revved up. As they say, keep the metabolic furnace burning uh, by having six plus meals per day. Uh, but funny enough, there was actually a study done where individuals were kept in an isolated respiration chamber. So on one side, there was people having three meals per day. The other side, there was 14 meals per day with the exact same amount of calories. And it showed that there was literally no difference at all in energy expenditure, or it made absolutely no difference in terms of the actual metabolic rate. So this has been debunked over and over and over again that you do not have to have consistent meals and especially a bunch of them throughout the day. The main reason bodybuilders and whatnot will have it is just to fit in more food because they need more calories within the day to keep their size and whatnot. And if they say it's for their metabolism, it is absolutely not true at all. Now, when it comes to metabolism, there's also a bunch of other things that are being associated with it, or at least people are claiming. Uh, specific supplements seem to be the biggest thing out there, I find. A lot of times people are saying there's going to be a fat burner that's going to keep your metabolism revved up uh, anything associated with some sort of pills um, I've just heard it pretty much all and I'm sure a lot of you have heard it as well but I can promise you there's literally going to be nothing in the world that's going to be out there that's just going to help you magically start to eat more food and just burn more calories within the day which is what your metabolism does some people also say spicy food can be linked to it as well but what I will say is that there will be very small differences, something like spicy food or maybe even the sauna, which will get you to burn a little bit more calories because your body starts to work harder and it's essentially because you're sweating, you will burn slightly more calories. But I can promise you the differences between cold baths, sauna, green tea, spicy food, all those things are very, very minimal in terms of actually helping you speed up your metabolism. And I find within the fitness industry, people love to spend most of their time on the things that produce the least amount of results such as this instead of actually taking time building high quality muscle and other things which I'm just about to jump into now. Now tip number one and most importantly is allowing yourself to build muscle. Honestly, this is extremely underrated because it seems like these days most people love to diet and they just want to always be in a deficit to lose that stubborn belly fat. However, one of the greatest things you can do on your journey, especially early on, is allow yourself to be either around maintenance or a surplus. Unless you are overweight, you do need to tackle that and allow yourself to build high quality muscle. I can promise you when you spend time lifting heavy weights, being consistent with that, and being around maintenance or a surplus and you actually build high quality muscle, it makes the fitness journey so much easier later on because your body actually burns way more calories when you have more muscle. It's a fact, it's science. There's tons of studies out there proving that. And a lot of people don't give themselves that opportunity because as soon as they start, they wanna have a shredded six pack because they're always trying to diet and they're very inconsistent with it as well. And you never allow yourself to build muscles. So you're always fighting your body as it's used to being in a deficit. It doesn't have enough muscle on itself and you're just going to be thrashing your metabolism over and over again constantly trying these diets so that's going to be the biggest and most important thing before i jump into number two i just want to say myself and josh have actually helped close to 4500 people now on their fitness journey gain muscle lose fat 
just change their overall body composition and just feel their absolute best. And we actually guarantee our results. If you want to check out first link down below, just fill out an application. There's literally no strings attached. But what I will say is when you're unemotionally attached to the journey, such as myself and all of our amazing coaches, we can actually tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear, especially because when you're doing it by yourself, it's very hard to stick to something. It's very challenging because you're going to diet one day and then you see the weight, you see the scale change a little bit and you start to make all these emotional decisions that aren't right for you. Whereas when you have a coach that's going to say, Hey, stick to the process. Here's the game plan. It's very customized. There's no way you're going to fail. So I guarantee my results are your money back. Check that out now into the next one. Now this kind of ties into the first one here, but it's just going to be actually focusing on doing a slower diet. It seems like these days, everyone is in a rush to lose a ton of weight. Maybe it's a vacation you have coming up, whatever the case is. The quicker you try to get it done, the more you're gonna essentially mess up your metabolism. Your metabolic rate is gonna go down and it's just gonna get used to eating way less calories. It's gonna be a lot harder to build back up afterwards and you're just gonna be shooting yourself in the foot long-term. So I really do recommend taking more of a long-term approach if you're going to go for a diet phase and just know that the more that you actually just do these crash diets, these fad diets, these really quick ones, it's just gonna mess things up. It's gonna make it a lot harder and it's just gonna be at the point where you end up really struggling to actually fix your metabolic rate afterwards because of how low your calories have been. And it's something I definitely don't recommend. Next up, we've got cardio. Cardio is going to be your best friend. So I really wanted to encourage you do strength training at least four times per week. It will change your body composition. It'll change your metabolic rate. Like I can't stress enough how important it is. I know a lot of people will jump right to classes and just do tons of cardio. And then they wonder why they're not seeing the results. And yes, they're able to eat a lot. And yes, you know, their metabolism is in a great spot because of the cardio and whatnot. However, they're not happy with their overall physique and they just haven't focused on the long-term approach, which is going to be strength training as it helps you build high quality muscle and it help you with your metabolism long-term. But of course, cardio is a fantastic tool. I do recommend a lot of lists. Honestly, low intensity steady state cardio has been proven to be one of the greatest things you can do. A lot of people overlook walking as well. It is a great form of cardio. People don't realize it, but it's a great tool to help you not eat into your muscle mass. And that's where once again, when it comes to cardio, you have to be careful because if you're someone who ends up doing too much of it, although your metabolism will be firing, you'll be in a good spot. You can eat tons of calories and be in a pretty good spot. Long term, you can eat into your muscle mass, which will affect it. You may not realize it right now, but in the future, it could mess things up. So having a good balance, a couple cardio sessions a week, a couple strength training sessions, absolutely fantastic. Next up, we have NEAT bonuses. Now, this is something a lot of people overlook and NEAT actually stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this will account for about 10% of the calories you burn per day and you don't realize you're actually doing it. It could be tapping your feet at your desk, stretching at your desk, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, uh, parking further away when you go to the gym or grocery store, whatever the case is. This is something that can absolutely help. And once again, very, very overlooked. And 10% is a good boost and can help you obviously speed up your metabolism. And with that, those are the biggest movers obviously just focusing on a healthy lifestyle, getting good quality sleep, moving a ton, strength training, all that great stuff. That's what's really going to help. And honestly, to me, those are the most overlooked things. Everyone out there is looking for that quick fix for that thing that will magically change you. And if you're going to do that, you're always going to be looking. So a couple things to recap here, regularly be physically active, regularly weigh yourself. So that way you can see what's going on, especially with the data, focus on weight training and just make overall positive lifestyle changes over time and your metabolism will be in a great spot and you will thank yourself later. Now, last thing is do not crutch on getting older. So many people, and I've heard it a million times, when you get to my age, everything slows down. And the reason is there's other external factors, right? It's you start moving less, you start eating worse. Maybe you start drinking more. Maybe your sleep is out of whack. And so many people will make this excuse of like their age or whatever it is, other factors without actually realizing what's going on in their life. So anyways, that's all I have for you. Hopefully this makes sense. These are the biggest movers. This is what will actually help you in so many different ways. It'll help you eat more while losing more weight over time and you'll be in an incredible spot. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more content, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.